We've set a challenge for two English teachers from Ackland Burley School in North London. Right now, they've no idea where we're taking them, or that by 2pm this afternoon, they'll need to be ready to teach their Year 7 class, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. I would doubt that they've ever studied a whole play, and I'm not sure how much drama they would have done, so this will be a really good opportunity for them to get stuck in, in role, I hope. Our two teachers are Sarah Mark, an ex-actor. She's been teaching English for three years, and her colleague, Lewis Rolfe, a graduate trainee. He's on placement at Ackland Burley and has hardly any experience teaching drama. Renfield. How's Renfield? Not apprehensive, but I'm guessing that there is going to be a fair, a fair degree of spontaneity on the day as to how we put our heads together and work, work it out. I've got a drama background, so I think my, my confidence is kind of getting kids up and moving for him to get students up, maybe not something that he's always so keen to do. Come. He is here. Master, hear me. Mostly, we su we're sitting down writing or reading. You read or you just write. It's a little bit boring. To help them find inspiration for the lesson, we're taking them to Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. Here, both teachers will find their acting and drama skills are put to the test when they take part in a drama workshop with actor Yolanda Vasquez. Two, three, four, five. Ha! Oh, OK, now this hacker has got a nonsense rhyme that goes with it, and the rhyme is huda. And on the Globe stage, they'll find a box containing four resources specially chosen by experts. These will be the vital ingredients for their lesson. Oh, <laughs> it's a hoodie, brilliant. It's 8.30 a.m. and our two teachers are travelling across London. They've got no idea where they're going or the topic of the lesson they're being asked to teach. OK, we're going towards King's Cross. Uh, I don't know, maybe a gallery? A maybe the, the, the British Library, we're near the British Library. It's quite scary, though, not knowing anything about it. Are we, oh, it is the Globe. We're, I've, I've been there. Oh, it's here, duh. Oh, my God. Oh. They may be beginning to get an inkling that their lesson will be something to do with Shakespeare, but there's still plenty of surprises waiting for them in the box, and actor Yolanda has the key. Hi there. Hi, Lou. Nice to meet you. I'm here to welcome you and give you this key okay. for you to open this box with. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. A rose. A football. Oh, I'm loving a football. Yeah, we confiscated it, put it in the football box. <laughs> yeah, straight away. A rose. And oh, a picture of a, of a dagger and a mm. knife. And. Oh, God. Oh, it's a hoodie. Brilliant. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay, a hoodie. A knife. Let's just check. There's nothing else. Oh no, there's more. Oh, no, see this a DVD. Watch me. Watch me. Right. Okay. okay. I tell you what. Let's go and have a look at the DVD. Okay. And then it'll tell us what it's about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the DVD holds some vital tips from the experts who've chosen the resources. The hoodie and the football come from English and cultural commentator Professor Richard Shoke. Well, you would think that the football is the last object you would want to teach Romeo and Juliet. Obviously, it's anachronistic, doesn't appear anywhere in the play. But I think the link is that football and all sports, like language, have in common rules. If you want to be good in language, such as poetic language in Shakespeare's verse, and you want to be good at playing a sport, football or any other, you have to be able to master the rules. Now take the scene in Act 1, Scene 4, when Romeo and Juliet meet for the first time at Capulet's Ball. In that lovely scene that leads up to their first kiss, the dialogue is actually a poem. What is Shakespeare telling us? He's saying that this particular kind of highly formal technical language is actually uniting the lovers. The characters relate to each other in the same way that the words relate to each other. So right away in the first act of the play, Shakespeare is telling us that language is the key to unlock the depths of feeling and relationships. 
our other object for the play, perhaps a bit more predictable, is the infamous hoodie. Of course, these days, a symbol, an icon for gang culture. Well, just as gangs have their own distinctive emblematic wardrobe, like the hoodie with a particular badge or lettering, a particular color or size, you might want to do the same thing in the play so that the very costume becomes an emblem for families and affiliations and a way of distinguishing one faction from another. And there's also a deeper connection, which is that the hood, the part we can't see very much here, the hood is actually the ancient emblem for death, the hood of the grim reaper, which of course the spirit of death, the specter of death, haunts Romeo and Juliet from start to finish. So in a surprising way, the hoodie is helping us to tap into a deeper theme in Romeo and Juliet. Once we had the Roman Juliet context, I understood the kind of significance of gang-related warfare and hostility in, in modern-day fo football fans. Um, what I didn't think about was this, that kind of concept of you know, using the ball to actually mirror the rhythm of Shakespeare's language. And I think, um, I think that was a really interesting idea and it probably wasn't something I would have picked up on myself. The hoodie was really interesting. The whole concept of, of the hoodie and linking it, the hood itself to death was fascinating um, and really interesting in terms of how what we associate with hoodies today. The rose and the picture of a dagger have been chosen by theatre director Bill Buckhurst, who's currently rehearsing Romeo and Juliet. The first object I've chosen is a dagger. Um, maybe not the most original object, um, but I think hugely important in, in several different ways. Uh, firstly, obviously, um, as a literal object in the play, um, Juliet kills herself with a dagger. It's a pretty gruesome, horrible way to die, I imagine. I think the actual, the real, the real thing is, is scary. Um, of course, it's, it's a completely impractical thing to, to bring into school, um, but to maybe um, talk to the students with a picture there to really think about the, the reality of the situation. That there's a young woman who produces a knife and, and stabs herself to death. Um, just kind of, you know, I've, I've talked to the actors a lot about that, you know, when you really sit down and, and think about that as an image, it's, it's ghastly. I think more importantly though with the knife, symbolic way, it, in terms of thinking about the, the language, Shakespeare uses language very often like a, like a weapon really in this, in this play. Um, if you look at the very first scene, the way that the Montagues and Capulets talk to each other, using these very short, spiky words, bite, thumb, you, sir, all these tiny little words, which come very, which are extremely different to kind of the, the poetry of the lovers. I think, and yeah, another image, um, which I've been thinking about a lot is, is the rose. I mean, kind of a, the opposite object to a, to a knife. Um, and that's interesting, thinking about the opposites in this play, I think. It's a bit of a cliche for us, a romantic sort of image. But actually, if you really look at what a rose is, um, it's quite an interesting object because you've got this very beautiful flower at the end. But as you go down the stem, I mean, you've got thorns, which if you pick it up in the wrong way, will, will prick you, will draw blood, will hurt. And I think that that's rather a nice sort of way to think about this relationship of Romeo and Juliet, or indeed maybe any relationship. It's not all roses. <laughs> it's, um, you know, that actually um, love can be very painful and hurtful and confusing and full of opposites. And Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet, is full of the language of, of opposite. When you said about Juliet, the, the horrors of Juliet actually choosing to kill herself, that, that made me stop and think, oh, OK, that's a bit of the play that we just kind of accept because Romeo and Juliet kill themselves, we know that. So that was quite interesting to hear him sort of take that bit and, and emphasise the horrors of that. In the same way the rose kind of made sense, the kind of love-hate divide and that kind of theme came out straight away. The other thing he said about the knife, which was relating it back to the language, was, again, really interesting that language can hurt and the way Shakespeare writes those insults, short, sharp thrusts of, of nastiness can definitely, you know, it can be represented in, in, in the dagger. To help them plan their lesson further, actor Yolanda Vasquez is taking a drama workshop with them, looking at characterisation. We're going to walk a little bit about the room, we're going to feel a little bit daft, but we're going to walk... But Lewis is looking a bit nervous. 
There's four archetypes. There's the sovereign, yep. the warrior, the carer, and the joker, sometimes known as the wizard or the trickster. They all have a physical shape. We have to get them into our bodies first before we can begin to think and talk about them. I'm certainly not an experienced actor. I don't have... I, I auditioned for a friend's play once and it went horribly badly, and I'm certainly not a good actor. Are you walking slower or faster than before as the sovereign? Are you looking at people? Do you want to look people straight in the face or above or below? Uh, think I mean, I'm used to doing that sort of thing, but I think it's not necessarily Lou's favourite kind of way to pass an hour. And I think that neither of us felt self-conscious. Um, I loved it. Whether you want to, at any given moment, look at each other or ignore each other, and then... Uh... <laughs> Have at thee, boy. Have at thee, boy. Have at thee, boy. Very good. Get me to some pizza, Good father, I beseech you! Get me to some pizza, Chuck. Good father, I beseech you! And you stop. Fantastic. Really good. The clock struck nine when I descend the night. Yolanda was actually really good uh, making us feel fairly comfortable. I mean, considering some of the things she had us doing, I didn't feel awkward about it. And she had a really good way of kind of communicating ideas to us. And just make a statue of something that you adore. OK. I thought the idea of the sort of freeze frame stuff was really good, um, kind of it becoming uh, uh, an emotion. Your kind of mid-dance. Oh, okay. Perfect. Lovely, fantastic, great. Well, now remember that. B. And then when we did the, the insulting, the, the cussing, the idea of the, the two war, warring groups using the insults, I think that would work really well in a lesson. You're going to say to that family, do you bite your thumb at me, sir? OK. OK, and then you're going to come out of that gesture and just say back, uh, no, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. One, two, three. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? No, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? No, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Fantastic. OK, and I'm going to leave that. It gives you enthusiasm back. It gives you to work with somebody else who's outside the field of teaching, but, but within the field of, of, of Shakespeare, it, who has real enthusiasm and skill and knowledge from a different perspective, is, is, is lovely because you get to share ideas. You see someone else use the same text that you use to teach at, at GCSE and approach it in a completely different way. They're off back to school to get ready for their lesson and it seems Lewis has some newfound confidence. We should sort of base it on a kind of dramatic performance of a text as far as possible. I think meeting Yolanda was really useful for us and she made me feel fairly kind of comfortable doing those things and um, doing the exercises that she put in front of us and that made me feel kind of more confident about teaching it to students. In just over an hour, they'll need to be ready to teach Romeo and Juliet to a class of Shakespeare novices, and it's Sarah who's beginning to show nerves. To go into a class that, that haven't studied Shakespeare, that haven't studied Romeo and Juliet, yeah. and, and go straight into a discussion yeah. on the rules of, of poetic verse is, is, is probably a bit of a turn-off, I don't think. It's, yeah, I Yeah, we'll be able to do it in a day, no problem. That, gosh, a whole, a whole morning's plan lesson, that's a privilege. Um, didn't quite turn out like that. It was quite difficult to sort of think, OK, we've actually only got an hour, which bits are we going to use? I was much more stressed than Lou. But help is on hand from their head of department, Emma Barker, and she'll be singing on their lesson later. I think Sarah will relish the fact that this is a drama challenge and really be in her element with it. It's a play, Romeo and Juliet, that we've studied. We used to do at Key Stage 4 and then we're about to start teaching at Key Stage 3. So she's familiar with the text and I know she's really sort of brought it to life in the way she's taught it before. Lou hasn't taught this text at all. What are the characters? Sorry, I'm not clear what they're... Are they all the same characters? Happiness or anger. OK, and they're using the insults? Yes. Being happy with them or being angry with yes. them. Yes. Do we? That's not really going to work, is it? it might, um, no, it might do. We did get a little bit stressed in the in the in the preparation process, insofar as that we couldn't include everything. A's on one side, B's on the other. Family snapshot. 
Why are we doing a family snapshot? Because to link in, to link in to them, they're easy. From the individual to the broad, the gangs, yeah. So I was very glad of, of, of some clarity from Emma, who didn't have all the experience that we'd had in the morning and therefore could actually see things that would work immediately and w w was able to help us discard things that wouldn't work. I think that maybe we can get them to think about the way they use their voice, the way they use their body as they deliver their line mm -hmm. to really push their message home. And then when you've gone through the text, I think you want perhaps ask them to draw some conclusions about language. So that's when you go back to the language focus. What do you mm -hmm. notice about the words okay. you're actually saying? I think the idea from Yolande of, of using your body to express an emotion was something that was quite small and, and accessible and we wanted to start with that. Well, no, what we did is happy with my family, yeah. hate your family. So that's we're happy, we're both happy, happy together, together yeah. and then hate So that, that's, that's what you yeah, do. Well done, and in yeah. that case, um, you could, what you could, yeah, that's how we use the pop. So you do, you do the happy family snapshot. Sure. So you, when you're doing that, we've got them on two different halves. So you sort of push the them most up. important themes we thought to explore were kind of this idea of love and hate and the kind of pathway and the, the, the idea of gang culture and hostility. And that is something that's really relevant to our students. But will their students share Lewis and Sarah's enthusiasm for Shakespeare? Students here, as in other schools, will be aware of representation of youth violence more and more in the media. We hear about it a lot more and they're aware of it a lot more. And I think seeing that Shakespeare was dealing with similar issues is something that makes the text come to life for them. The class is a year seven class, so they may well have experienced Shakespeare at primary level. I would doubt that they've ever studied a whole play and I'm not sure how much drama they would have done. So this will be a really good opportunity for them to get stuck in, in role, I hope. For the lesson, they'll be using the school's drama space. But for Lewis, it's his first time teaching outside his classroom. It's the first time he's probably experienced a, a drama space as a teacher. And it is, I'm sure it was a bit of a shock. We are going to do um, a lesson based quite centrally around performance today. Because normally my lessons are taught with desks in front of the students and pens and books in front of the students. And even though we kind of have an interactive environment around that, it's not, it's certainly not an environment where there are no books and people are sitting on the floor. So through sort of experimenting and putting yourself in there and doing bits of acting and stuff yourself, you have more to, more to draw on and to pass on. Dobby, tell me something about a rose then. What, what does it make you feel? What emotions um, does it make you feel? Probably like two-sided, because a rose, it looks nice, but it has thorns. Right, okay. So it might fit like, feel like you're in love or something. Right, good. Um, it kind of makes me think of war, because like the wars of the roses. And right, stuff. okay, good. Brilliant. They gave more in response to the objects at the beginning than I ever thought they would. It was it was lovely to, to hear what they had to say, and it made it very easy for us to find a route through. What feelings inside do you might you associate with seeing a knife like that, Frank? Like uh, anger and and you might feel a bit scared. Um, say if he was in a fight or something, and someone would come out with a knife. What? Why would that change it? Why? What would that do to the fight, Dan? Just, I don't know, sort of like ruin it. It would ruin it. <laughs> it would. It would what? Yeah. Okay. When I say the words hoodie to you, what kind of emotions might you associate? When you, with when you see or when you wear a hoodie. We get a lot of press at the minute, or you know, ongoing at the minute, saying what other people think when they see hoodies. But students who wear hoodies and perhaps could be associated with the negative connotations of wearing a hoodie, it's really interesting to see perhaps what they, what they can come up with when they just get asked to disassociate themselves from wearing a hoodie but just see it as an object. Um, and so that was really interesting and, and got, got some fascinating emotions from the kids. Look, like, because you said on a Sunday you'd put your hoodie on and feel warm and snug. Yeah. Like, you, like, cuddle up in your hoodie. Absolutely. So that idea of feeling warm and maybe cosy and safe. If you were, if it was, like, really late and at night and you didn't really want to be seen. <laughs> OK, so the idea of it being, being a camouflage, something to hide behind. Yeah. Lovely. Um, ashamed of your face. 
ashamed of your face. <laughs> so it's back to that idea of wanting to hide behind your hoodie. Yeah. Fantastic, okay. thank you very much. Put your hands down, guys. I want you to create a physical representation with just with your body, with no voice at all, with for one of those emotions. I'm gonna give you a countdown. Three, two, one, and action. It was directly taken from the way Yolanda started with us, actually. She kind of got to doing this sort of simple freeze and expression of emotion. It, we thought it would probably be quite useful for the, the students to do the same, feel their way around the space and do some, something basic uh, before we introduced kind of the emotional side of what was to come. Tony. Anger. Anger. OK, I'm feeling anger. Yeah. Sabrina, is that what it is? Yeah. Anger, lovely, okay, beautiful. Guys, you two want to unfreeze, just stay where you are. Um, Luke. What, what about Luke? What about Luke? Go on, Jamie. Um, can't worry or scared. George. Like, um, sad. S sad, sorrow, okay. Um, he looks quite dangerous. He certainly does look quite dangerous. What else? <laughs> disguise. Disguise. Attic, share and reveal your disguise. What was it? Um, it was all of them, actually. It was all of them. You are multi-talented and multitasking. Lovely. Can we clap our act quickly? It's halfway through their lesson, and their head of department, Emma, has been taking notes. Yeah, I think it would have been nice to have more of the students using a bit more of the language and to look a little bit more about the patterning of the language. I think the football was there perhaps to um, invite those kind of comparisons, that there's a sort of a to and fro and that one side does something and that um, um, promotes a specific response from the other side. I like the way they made the links immediately at the beginning between the sort of the different emotions and I thought the hoodie worked really well as one of the props in inspiring them to think about sort of it as camouflage and that you're hiding something but that you're also um, sort of presenting a particular face to the world and I thought the connotations of the objects were really apparent to the students and they were able to um, use them really readily in their drama so I, thought I was really really pleased. Emma didn't need to wait much longer for some text. Lewis and Sarah have now separated the class into the Montagues and the Capulets and are about to try out the cussing scene. Leon, I want you to be really brave and start this off. We are now going to use text from Romeo and Juliet to really convey your feelings to the opposite side. Three, two, one, action. Do you want your form at me, sir? No. Oh. Brilliant. OK, and freeze, 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 freeze. Brilliant. The cussing was great. It was a bit mayhemic. Um, but it was, again, they, they took it and ran with it themselves. Do you quarrel, sir? I like you! Oh! It's certainly something they're familiar with because they, they curse each other a lot during the school day, in the corridors and at the beginning of lessons till you set them, set them down. So it was something, it was good to kind of make them aware that this, this is part of literary heritage as well and they, they did really understand that. I would like Montagues and Capulets to find their initial eyeball partner and make that eye contact. Give it your best shot. Three, two, one. Action. Like your mum, you lie! Oh! OK, 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 OK. What actually happens in this room when an insult gets thrown? OK. Let's hear first of all from the Montagues. Ah, go on, go on. Uh, you, you like get angry, so like, and excited to say uh, more cusses to them. Okay, so you, so getting one cuss makes you do, makes more. you, that makes you do more. So one insult is provoking a response, even if it is not on the green paper. Fantastic, guys. And they themselves saw the build up, the build up of how, how that could come into a much more serious fight. When you add the words, that turn it into a modern day cuss, as we've just had said here. What happened to this room when, Do when Dobby made that choice? Then you think this is it, everyone's just gonna start. Why is, every why is everyone just gonna start? Because people are gonna laugh, but some people take it serious. And if you took it seriously, someone else. For me to have, have taken that as, as a, 
as something that they'd learned in the lesson or, or been able to understand through a tiny bit of Shakespeare text and a tiny bit of, of physicalisation of, of emotion. I was, I, I was really pleased. That, for me, was a really positive outcome. When you go to a football match, you see opposing fans her throwing cusses back and forth, a bit like we've just... I, I, I wouldn't feel as, as concerned or apprehensive about taking a drama lesson now. Uh, whereas before, if someone had asked me to cover a drama lesson or get involved in drama, I'd have probably been fairly apprehensive about it. Whereas now, having seen a bit and done a little bit with Sarah, I feel that um, drama is not necessarily to be feared. <laughs> The two warring families, the Capulets and the Montagues, finally, after hundreds of years, made friends. If you'd like to try out teaching outside the box, why not get in touch with your local theatre? They usually have seasons of educational performances and workshops for teachers and schools. There's some helpful web links on the page associated with this programme at teachers.tv. I learnt some things about Romeo and Juliet and how objects can be connected to different emotions. About um, roses, when it says um, something so beautiful can be so hurtful. Because the, cause of these two families arguing, like two of their, like two people died just from their families. So. At first I thought Shakespeare was boring, but like, when we got to like, act out scenes and um, say, like, sort of joke around with each other, and I just sort of find it kind of fun.